So now we'll take a look at a polynomial that has a irreducible quadratic uh, factor in its denominator. So first of all, what we're going to use is we're going to use the discriminant that comes from the quadratic formula. B squared minus 4AC. Um, this is, of course, if we have a quadratic polynomial, AX squared plus BX plus C, this is actually the part of the quadratic formula that is underneath the radical. So if this B squared minus 4AC turns out to not be a perfect square, it means you're going to have a radical that cannot be simplified into an integer, and therefore you have an irrational number as a zero, and that's the case that we're looking for when we're looking for, or irrational, or it could also be that it is a um, non-real complex number. And that's, those are the cases we're looking for uh, when we say we have an irreducible quadratic. The zeros of that quadratic function are either irrational or non-real complex numbers. So let's go ahead and do what we've done before. First, we check to see if it's a proper fraction. And indeed, this is. Next, we're going to factor the denominator. So as before, this is a cubic polynomial. It has four terms. So what I would first try to do is I'd try to factor this by grouping. But it doesn't work factoring this by grouping. So next thing I realize I have to do is apply all my synthetic division with the factor theorem and the remainder theorem in order to find factors of this polynomial. So I'm going to be looking at the factors of the constant, which are 1 and 7, over the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 1. So I'm going to be basically looking at plus or minus 7 over 1. So positive 7 and negative 7, and plus or minus 1 over 1, because 1 is also a factor of 7. So my four possible rational zeros are positive 1, negative 1, positive 7, and negative 7. Um, in the previous video, I said that there's a trick that you can use to check to see if 1 is a 0. By adding up all the coefficients, um, you can tell whether or not 1 is a 0 of your uh, polynomial. So the first coefficient here is 1. Minus 7 would be negative 6. Um, plus 13 would be 7. And then minus another 7 would be 0. So the coefficients in the denominator here do indeed add up to 0. So I know that when I use synthetic division with number 1, I will get a remainder 0. And also that x minus 1 is a factor of this denominator. So I put in the coefficients of the denominator here, 7, 13, and negative 7. And then I go ahead with my synthetic division. I bring down the first term. I get uh, 1 times 1 is 1. And then negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. And then 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. And then 13 plus negative 6 is 7. Once again, 1 times 7 is 7. And negative 7 plus 7 is 0. So I get a 0 for the remainder, which means that x minus 1, that number up in the bracket, is one of my factors. And the other factor of that denominator is going to be the second degree polynomial that I get for the quotient here. Because it's a third degree polynomial and I divided it by a linear polynomial, x minus 1, the quotient is going to be quadratic, second degree. And these are the coefficients, 1, negative 6, and 7. So it's going to be 1x squared minus 6x plus 7. All right, now once you have a quadratic polynomial, you can try to factor it, but if you have the idea that it might be an irreducible quadratic, which I have that idea here, I don't think I'm going to be able to factor this, what you do is you go ahead and you check it with the discriminant here that I was talking about, b squared minus 4ac. We've identified here a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 7. So b squared would be negative 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, 
times C, which is positive 7. So this turns out to be uh, 36 minus 28. And 36 minus 28 yields an 8 for us. So what we're checking to do is make sure that this is a perfect square. If it's not a perfect square, then we will not be able to factor this uh, quadratic polynomial. And indeed, 8 is not a perfect square, which means x squared minus 6x plus 7 is an irreducible quadratic. If I try to factor this, it won't work. Um, the only way of solving or finding the zeros of this quadratic polynomial are by using the, or is by using the uh, quadratic formula or completing the square. And therefore, when I'm doing my partial fraction decomposition, I'm going to have to treat the partial fraction that has the denominator that is this thing, x squared minus 6x plus 7, differently than I did the linear polynomials or the linear factors. So here I have a distinct linear factor, first power, and I also have a distinct quadratic factor for my denominators. So here's my original. Let's see, the original is uh, this rational expression. And it turns out that the denominator here for this original factors into a linear and a quadratic factor. So let's bring this down. And it turns out that this is an equivalent expression to this expression here. We'll take the same numerator, which is x, oops, let's get back to black, x squared minus 8x plus 11. And we have this now for the denominator. I have my x minus 1 as one factor. And the other qu factor here is an irreducible quadratic factor, x squared minus 6x plus 7. If we could factor it, we would factor it and get two, new fa two other factors. But this is an irreducible quadratic factor. All right, so now that we have this, we can set up our partial fractions. All right, so what we have, this thing here is actually, we're going to assume, equal to two partial fractions. I know there are two partial fractions because I have two factors in my denominator. So my first partial fraction will have x minus 1 as its denominator. And since x minus 1 is linear, for this to be a proper fraction, the numerator would have to be a constant. So I'm going to call that a. So it's constant in terms of x. And then plus, and my second denominator is going to be this quadratic, x squared minus 6x plus 7. And this one, well, for this to be a proper fraction, the numerator could be a constant, but it could also involve a linear term. Because all that has to be true is that the numerator has to have a smaller degree than the denominator. And since the denominator has a degree of 2, the numerator could have either a degree of 1 or 0. So it could be a constant, but it could also be an expression of the form bx plus c. So it might have a linear term. Because if it does have a linear term in x, this would still be a proper fraction. So this is how you deal with quadratic factors as opposed to linear factors. When the linear factor is in the denominator of a, par of a um, partial fraction, the numerator only needs to be a constant that doesn't involve x. But when it's a quadratic that's irreducible, that's the denominator of your partial fraction, the numerator should have a term that's linear in x, bx, so it'd have a we have a coefficient in front of x. And it should also, um, you should also show that it may also have a constant term, that c. All right, so once we have that, just like before, we're going to clear the fractions here by multiplying everything by the LCD. So on the left side, the LCD is the denominator. So when I multiply the left-hand side by that denominator, the LCD, I'll just get the numerator, x squared 
minus 8x plus 11. But on the right hand side, when I multiply by the LCD, which are these two factors, that's the LCD, this first factor of x minus 1 will cancel out, leaving the factor in the numerator a multiplied by the other factor, the quadratic one, x squared minus 6x plus 7. And the second term, this one over here, bx plus c, when I multiply this by the LCD, these two factors, the quadratic factor cancels, and I get the numerator bx plus c multiplied by the linear factor, which is x minus 1, x minus 1. So what I've done is I've multiplied 1, 2, 3 terms. I've multiplied all three terms by x minus 1 times x squared minus 6x plus 7. When I do that here, they both cancel, leaving me this. When I do that here, only the x squared minus 6x plus 7 cancels, leaving me this. When I do that here, the x minus 1 cancels, leaving me this. Now I'm going to use that trick. Unfortunately, I only have one term that has a factor with a rational 0. This term right here, if I plug 1 in, if I plug in 1 here, I will get this entire term to be 0. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to let x equal 1. Let x equal 1. I'll get 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 11 is equal to, and it's going to be a times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 7. And this term here will become 0 because when I plug a 1 into this factor, 1 minus 1 would be 0. And 0 times bx plus c would still be 0. So this term goes away when I plug 1 in, when I let x equals 1. And I'll get uh, 1 minus 8 plus 11 is equal to 1 minus 6 plus 7 times a. And let's see what we get. We get 1 minus 8 is um, negative 7, and negative 7 plus 11 is 4 equals, and then 1 minus 6, well, that's uh, negative 5, and negative 5 plus 7 is positive 2a. So 4 is equal to 2a. You divide both sides by 2. You get that a is equal to 2. So now I know that a, the constant on top of the first partial fraction with the linear denominator, a is the number 2. Now I need to find b and c. Unfortunately, there's no rational number that I can plug in for x here to get it to be um, to 0, to get it to be a 0. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to multiply everything out on the right side and uh, compare each term and make sure each term matches the coefficient on the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to make sure that all the coefficients match up. All right, so on the left-hand side, we have, well, let's just copy this and bring it down, x squared minus 8x plus 11. And on the right-hand side, we know now that a is the number 2. So I'm going to replace the a here with the number 2. All right, and since a is 2, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply everything out on the right side and then just compare term by term to what I have on the left side. So let's see what we have. I can distribute this 2 to make this 2x squared minus 12x plus 7, or plus 14, actually. And I can also foil this one here to make this, uh, let's see, bx times x would be bx squared. bx times negative 1 would be negative bx. 
c times x would be cx, and c times negative 1 would be negative c. And this has to equal x squared minus 8x plus 11. So let's collect everything on the right-hand side that has uh, x squared on it. All right, so on the right-hand side, I have this here and this here both having x squared. So I know that 2 plus b would be the coefficient of x squared on the right-hand side, x squared. And the coefficient of x squared on the left-hand side is 1. See right there, 1x squared. And then on the, let's collect the linear terms. So here's a 12x, here's a negative bx, and here's a positive cx. So I'll have plus, and then the coefficient of x is going to be negative 12 minus b plus c. Those are the terms that involve x. And those have to equal the negative 8x on the left side. And lastly, let's collect the constants. We have 14 and negative c. 14 and negative c. So I have plus 14 minus c. And those constants have to equal the constant on the right side, which is just 11. All right, so what I get from here is that 2 plus b has to equal 1. 2 plus b equals 1 implies that b is equal to negative 1. b equals negative 1. All right. I also have here that 14 minus c, 14 minus c is equal to 11, which when you solve this for c, you get that c is equal to 3. And we already had from before that a was equal to 2. a equals 2. So that when I go back to my original rational expression that I uh, look for the partial fractions for, this thing here, I now have all the values that I need. All right. Let's grab these because now we know a, b, and c. So, once again, we found all our values. There are a, b, and c right there. Here's the expression that was waiting on my values for a, b, and c. Let's just plug them in here. So a, a is 2. It is the number 2. B, well, B is the number negative 1. So B is negative 1. And C, well, C is the number 3. C is the number 3. So C is 3. So at the end, the original rational expression can be written as 2 over x minus 1 plus 3 minus x over x squared minus 6x plus 7. And that is how we do partial fraction decompositions when there is an irreducible quadratic factor.